Hi everyone, it's Tarrant. And Stella from Meeple University. Thank you for joining us. Today we'll be teaching you how to play philosophy. After watching this video, you'll be ready to play the game. Stay tuned. Let's learn to play philosophy. Game by Galen Goodwick and published by Quality Beast. If our video has been helpful to you, then please help us in making more of these videos by liking the video, comments below and subscribe. For now, let's get to the table. Philosophy is an abstract tile placement and movement game for two players, with variants at three and four. The board and tiles represent a conversation as players commit their ideas to the board, shaping and moulding their opponent's opinions as they play. The first player who can manipulate the board into a position of three tiles in a row, column or diagonal will win the game. To set up, simply lay out the board using whichever side you'd prefer. The difference is purely cosmetic. Each player chooses a colour and takes its set of 12 tiles. Indigo and teal come with the base game and you can also purchase the sage and amber sets. All colours function the same. And note that we're using prototype tiles in this video. The final versions will be hard plastic and they will have beveled corners on the underside allowing you to easily tilt the tiles from above to pick them up. Keep the respect token nearby and between the players. Now choose a first player who takes a special opening move by choosing any one of their tiles and then placing it onto one of these eight squares in the centre of the board but not the very centre. You're now ready to play. Philosophy is played in turns, back and forward, in which each player chooses one tile, places it on the board, and then, if applicable, triggers its effect and any chain reactions. Play continues until one player finishes a turn with three tiles in a row, column, or diagonal, or with all nine of the board's central squares filled. Each turn is broken into four steps. First, placing a tile. Second, activating that tile. Third, activating any chain reactions. And finally, checking for a winner. First is to place a tile. Choose a tile from your supply and then place it into an empty square anywhere in this nine square region at the center of the board. Next, check to see whether you activate the tile you just placed. Firstly, look at the small arrow on the outer ring of your tile. This tells you the square that that tile is targeting. If there's a valid target tile in that square, then the tile you've placed will activate. In most cases, a valid target tile is any tile belonging to the other player. But in the specific case of this tile, it can be any tile, yours or the opponent's. So this placement would have no valid target and wouldn't activate. Likewise, this placement has no valid target and wouldn't activate. But this placement would. You must now inflict the effect printed in the middle part of this icon on the target tile. And in most cases, it's going to push the tile in a certain direction. Here, for example, this tile moves one step left. And in fact, six of the 12 tiles resolve in this rather simple way. For example, this one here targets this tile and moves it diagonally here. This seventh tile works the same way but gives you a choice. You could play it here and then either move this tile here or here. For any of these, any tiles in the way of the movement are pushed along with the movement as well. So this activation would move these tiles here. And any tile pushed off the board in this way is returned to the supply of the player who owns it, ready to be used again on a future turn. The tiles with the double arrows on the target ring push in the same way, but target differently, targeting a space two spaces away. So this placement would move these like so. The other three tiles are special. The toss tile throws the targeted tile over the back of the activated tile, pushing anything behind it out of the way like so. The Persuade tile takes the activated tile and itself and moves both of them backwards one step, again pushing out anything that's in its path. Finally, the Rotate tile 
allows you to pick up the targeted tile and rotate it into any orientation. And this can include choosing not to rotate the tile at all. Once again, you can use this tile to target one of your own tiles, and it's the only tile that can do this. Once you've made your placement and activated it, you must now check for chain reactions. A chain reaction occurs if you have a tile which has not yet been activated on this turn, which has a valid target, and either that tile or its target or both were moved or targeted for rotation by the rotation tile, even if you chose not to rotate it, on your previous tiles activation. So here we move these four tiles. This tile now has a valid target and the target moved, so this could cause a chain reaction. This tile moved and now has a valid target, so this could be a chain reaction. This tile has a valid target and both of them moved, so this could be a chain reaction. But this pairing is not a chain reaction because neither of them moved, and this pairing is not a chain reaction because only your own tiles can chain. If you have at least one chain reaction, then you must choose exactly one of them and resolve the tile the same way you would for the first placement. All other potential chain effects are lost. So let's say in this case we activate this chain and throw this tile over to here. Once that's resolved, you'll now check for further chain reactions. This time, neither this pair nor this pair moved, so they won't chain. This pairing has been created, but this tile has already been activated in this turn, so it won't chain. But for this pair, the valid target was moved on the previous activation, and so this will chain. And it's the only valid chain on the board, so it must be resolved. This tile being moved to here. Continue checking for and resolving chains until there are no valid chains remaining on the board. Once again, remember that for chain reactions, a tile is considered to have moved in the previous activation if it was rotated or targeted for rotation by this tile. This placement here would trigger this chain. And this placement here triggers this chain reaction, even without rotating this tile, causing this movement. Once there are no chains remaining on the board, you'll check for victory. And if any one player has one or more sets of three tiles in a row, then that player wins. If both players have one or more lines of three in a row, then the game continues until only one player meets the condition. Play then passes to your opponent. But there is one more way to win. If you end your turn with all nine of the central squares full, then your opponent will have nowhere to legally place. The player who left the board in that position, forcing the opponent to be unable to play, wins the game. Thematically, the game of philosophy is intended to represent a discussion and meeting of minds between two players. Fitting with this theme is the respect token, which a player may give to their opponent as a mark of respect after a particularly clever action. This token can be passed back and forwards between the players as the game unfolds. Amber and Sage tile sets are also available for your choice of colours, and there are variant rules for three and four player games available on the Quality Beast website. And that's how to play Philosophy. We hope that you enjoy the video. Again, we're using a prototype version of this game, and so the rules and components are not final. And do check out the project page for the game. We'll put a link to that in the description below. If you find this video useful, please help us by hitting that like button subscribe to us. You can also hit the meeple in the corner to do so and hit the bell icon so you'll know when we have new videos. You can also follow me on Instagram for my board games, Jenny. Comments, suggestions and feedback are all welcome in the comments section below. Thanks for watching and see you next time.